What's going on, Danny? Pretty much, man. <laughs> just surviving. I woke up this morning, so it's a good morning, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. So what are we what are we talking about today? Well, um, I'd like to go over the VA home buying process, you know. Um, just kind of how how did you get started in real estate? Being a Marine veteran, things like that. Yeah. What what attracted you to want to be a realtor and things like that, you know? Okay, sure. Uh, well, I'm a veteran with the, the Marine Corps veteran. Um, and I got out back in 2020. So it was obviously an interesting time to get out of the, of the Marine Corps with everything happening. Um, I was really stressed out <laughs> about what I was gonna do. Oh, yeah. um, I'm sure a lot of people were uh, when, when everything was going on. But when I got out, I was actually planning to be an accountant. Uh, went to school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, went to school. <laughs> And very quickly found out that accounting is not as fun as you think. Uh, well, I'm actually <laughs> in an accounting class right now at National, and uh, yeah, it's not for me. <laughs> no, well, obviously it wasn't for me either. Man, I, I'm not a numbers guy. I was doing a spreadsheet, and my mind was just somewhere else. Bro. Yeah. Like, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. So I thought back to um, before I got out, I was I was deployed, and one of my one of my officers, one of my commanding officers was huge in investing. He was actually invested in, in Tesla at the time. So I, I actually, I don't keep in contact with him, but I'm assuming he's a bajillionaire now because he had close to $50,000 in, in Tesla when it was, it was valued at, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine how much money he has now. Hopefully so, he stayed, he stood by. He so that, so that kind of like sparked the interest in like investing and yep. kind of placing your money in places where you get a return. Exactly, yeah. Um, that's how I kind of figured out about bigger pockets. I looked into okay. investing. I, um, I learned about mutual funds and then I learned about stocks and day trading. I was kind of stuck on day trading for a little bit. It was, it was a little exciting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Test day the waters. Yeah, day trading is can, can catch you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was day trading for a little bit, probably lost close to $1,000 and I yeah. decided, okay, now it's, it's time to figure something else out. So I, I looked into other invest, investment um, strategies yeah. and obviously real estate investing came up, uh, bigger pockets came up and I was networking on bigger pockets and I was like, man, these people are regular people. A lot of them veterans too, cause I was in and they're making tons of money. Um, obviously not overnight, yeah, but yeah. over time, like they're making their money and they're spreading their, their, uh, their value, like they're they're telling other people how they did it, and I was like, man, this is easy. I can do this, whatever. So, Absolutely. 2020 came around. I had to get out. So I was going to school for accounting, but um, I quickly dropped out of, of college and decided to purchase a home. Um, probably the best time to purchase a home, if you could pick a time in the timeline to to purchase a home, I bought a, a condo in. Sarah Mesa for five hundred thousand uh, dollars, close to that five hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, um, I bought it with a partner. He was he was a buddy that I was in the Marine Corps with. Um, okay, and so did you guys uh, use your VA loans together? How did you structure that? Yep. So we we merged our VA loans, which is a strategy that you can do. Uh, we can both put zero percent down. Um, obviously, we, you just need the closing costs to be split. Mm -hmm. And I ended up coming out of pocket close to eight thousand um, dollars, and that investment through 2020, surprisingly, uh, was the best, not surprisingly actually, was the best investment I've made in my life so far. Yeah. I ended up selling my condo in Sarah Mesa for $780,000. After owning it for how long? For two years, 2020. Two, two years, and you sold it for how much more? Close, close to two hundred, close to three hundred thousand dollars. I when I when I tell you when that offer came in at seven hundred eighty thousand dollars, I damn near threw up, bro. So <laughs> how much did you guys, you know, you and your partner total net after the sale of that condo after two years? Yeah. So after closing costs and um, and splitting it, I walked away with a hundred thousand dollars. So two hundred thousand dollars each, and that's yeah. just a rough estimate. <laughs> and you. that just goes to show. Uh, it, when you invest in real estate, the returns that can happen in a matter of two years are sometimes astronomical. Like they just don't even make sense. There's not very many stocks on the on the open market that you could put your money into where you can get a return like that in two years. So being in real estate, 
what else have you kind of learned in the investment uh, space that you know you can kind of help other veterans sure. in the future? Yeah. So um, initially, I mean, I was I was an, as a new realtor back in 2021. I didn't really know much other than you know I bought a house and I made a ton of money. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I decided to educate myself on how me as a veteran could make my VA loan work for me. And what caught my eye was multifamily homes. Yeah. The potential of multifamily properties in your VA loan is insane. You did you know you could buy a multifamily property, live in one unit. You have to live in the unit if you if you buy yeah. a VA with a VA loan. For one year uh, right. for at least one year, yeah. And you could rent the other home or the other unit out and use seventy five percent of the income to offset your mortgage. Yeah. In some cases you could live for free or or damn near for free. Yeah, and even if you are um, supplementing that mortgage with a renter right now, imagine what that's gonna be in a couple of years. Right. So even if it doesn't look super sexy right now or <laughs> this year, you know, it's Especially does, with interest rates, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. It, it's not, it know? seems like it's not the right investment, but over time, like, just give it some time. That's yeah. all it's about. You gotta give it time. I like to talk to my clients about like looking at things from a, a different lens you know mm -hmm. if you're zoomed in on 2020 to 2023 and you only look at those three years you're gonna look at 2023 and be like it's not a good time right if you zoom out and capture 2005 to 2000 or 2023 that's a completely different dynamic to look at because you see those gains year over year all the way up to 2023 you're not just looking at the last couple years mm -hmm. So you kind of have a different baseline for what the lows and highs are, right? Yeah. And, and 2020 to 2023, for veterans specifically, it might not look like the best years either. Cause yeah. as you know, um, if you put any VA offers in, listing agents were not about it. They yeah. were not about accepting VA offers. Literally. It's, it's depressing. <clears throat> like it's insane how many times I, I put in an offer and they were like, what are you doing? Like we're not accepting. It goes straight to the bottom of the pile. Yeah. Straight to the bottom, yep. along with FHA loans. One of the best loans out there, VA loan, and they're just disregarding it for you know a cash offer. Sometimes it makes sense, but most of the time you're looking at putting a veteran in a home that's fully qualified and that will take care of the property. It's just, I think they're scared of the appraisal process, right? Yeah, That's, that's kind of what, what what's, anyways, What? tell me about your experience. How did you get into to real estate? Well, uh, it was, a little similar. So when I was, uh, it was 2020, I uh, just got back from deployment end of 2019. I'm like, all right, I definitely want to buy a condo or, you know, something for myself over mm -hmm. the next couple of years. So I actually got hooked up with an agent that, um, a lot of people in my command were using. So he kind of had uh, a lock on, he you know, rain up here. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And so, uh, I didn't know much about the home, home buying process at all, VA mm -hmm. loans, anything. So, uh, you know, I was looking for places with my agent for, at the time, and there was a few places that, you know, really, really stuck out. And at the time, I just didn't know if I was going to be in the Navy long enough to afford that mortgage, right? Right. At the time, I, I had uh, basically gotten medically uh, put on the medical board, right? So I was like, all right, well, I don't know if I'm going to be in the Navy much longer. And if I am not in the Navy, am I going to have an income from the Navy or am I just going to have to go to school full time and couldn't really like place that on myself to, mm -hmm. you know, leave it up to whatever, but the, the universe, yeah, you know, basically <laughs> just put yourself out there ab after a while. Like, um, I kind of backed off, you know, didn't think it was going to work out. I ended up getting, you know, medically retired. So I did have that, you know, safety net, sure. which would have helped, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I kind of missed my opportunity. And then, uh, you know, a year later after I was already, you know, selling real estate, mm -hmm. I ended up selling one of those places I was looking at and we sold it for 300 K more than what I would have bought That's it for. Crazy. And it had only been like a year. Yeah. So now I look back and I'm like, if I had just bought that place, it, yep. it met all of my needs. I was just being a little too, uh, you know, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Hesitant? You were just yeah, hesitant. hesitant. I was just, Maybe un uneducated? Yeah, yeah. Was I, I wasn't really um, focused on the investment itself. Okay. I was more focused on like what I thought would be, you know, a place that I would like and want to hold on to for a long time. I wasn't really thinking of it as an investment. Sure. Would you say your agent had 
any part of that was, I mean, no, nothing wrong with your agent. Um, but would you say if there was in another universe or another, another world, if there, if the agent could have maybe not pushed you, but educated you more about maybe the investment potential or even the VA loan, how to use it in your, to your advantage, you think that would have been different? Yeah, hundred percent. And, uh, you know, that's not a knock on, you know, my sure. past agent, you know, he's an awesome agent. He does a lot of business. Mm -hmm. He's super knowledgeable, but, um, you know, maybe he didn't know that I didn't know as much as I, you know, mm -hmm. did. Uh, but I, I think if he had kind of sat me down and, and kind of ran through like a whole uh, thing about investing, using your VA loan, what it's going to look like in a couple of years, mm -hmm. what the market looks like now compared to the past and just kind of educated me on real estate as a first time home buyer and as a veteran, you know, uh, I think it probably could have uh, helped me get to that next step or come to the finish line. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but there's no real, there's no reason yeah. to, you know, cry over spilt milk, but, um, and nobody can really predict the market, right? Exactly. I mean, who knows? He could have said, you're going to, you're going to make a return of $300,000 yeah. and then, you know, the, the market ends up tanking yep. and it's all his fault at that point. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so we're not saying we're, we're going to predict the future, but yeah, it's important to at least know your market and at least know the potential there is in the, in the market. Yeah, for sure. And I would definitely recommend, you know, talking to your agent and figuring out what the market trends are like in your area, especially San Diego or mm -hmm. these military towns, because they change so often. Right. You know, here in San Diego, the appreciation over the last couple of years was what, 20 something percent? Insane. I, I pff, way more than the past. Like, I think past 12 years. I was reading the, the average appreciation rate is 8.24%. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive me if I'm wrong on that, but it's around there. Um, that alone is an absolute insane return on your investment. Yeah. If you can make 8% back, that's, what are we at with inflation? Seven. Pretty much around there, there right? right? You're, yeah, you're beating inflation with, with an asset that'll last you yeah. a lifetime. And, and having a home is just like, it's probably, in my opinion, obviously it's a little biased, but it's the best investment you can make. You can flip homes if you if you choose. You can buy a home, sell it for for a premium after a couple of years or a couple of months, not years, months. You can rent your home out. That's a, that's an investment itself. You're you're making cash. You're getting cash flow. Um, hopefully in San Diego, it's a little tough, but you have that appreciation backing yeah. you up. And um, appreciation alone, that's a, that's a part of the strategy too. You buy a home in San Diego, you're already investing in real estate at that point. Um, yeah, that, that real estate has so many avenues of of approach when it comes to investing. Um, you, you really can't beat real estate. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, there there's a, a few people that I served with, you know, and this had to have been, I got out here in 2016, and I remember a first class that I had, and he hadn't even been in the, the Navy much longer than me, mm -hmm. right? So he had a house that he bought in I don't know, 2014, 2015, something like that. It was like a $300,000 house or, you know, less back right. then. He bought it, just redid the kitchen, some cabinets, stuff like that, and sold it like two years later, made an exorbitant amount of money <laughs> off of it, and then, um, you know, upgraded to the next house. Him and his family, they now live in a, probably a $1.6 million house here in San Diego right. with a yard, with a pool, all of that. And it all came from that first investment he made. Right. That first place he made, he put the sweat equity in, put in that extra little bit of work, upgraded it, and then sold it for profit, put that right into the next one. Yeah. And it's, a lot of people don't think that they are capable of doing that. Or, You'd be surprised how many people don't think they can qualify for a house. Exactly. It's especially the military. The military mm -hmm. is probably, no, it's definitely the most stable job you can have out there. Mm -hmm. And you, as an E2 in San Diego, you can afford a lot more than you think. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I have a friend, uh, he's an E6 and I was speaking with him like uh, a few months back. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife have been planning to buy a house out here for a couple of years now, but they're from the Midwest. They have no idea what home prices are like here. They just kind of hear like, oh, million dollar homes. Right. We can't afford that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got them pre-approved. They were pre-approved up to like 900,000. He was like, what Insane. is going on right Insane. now? Insane. He's like, I did not even, like, this doesn't even make sense. I'm like, you you really need to speak with a professional before making assumptions about anything, mm -hmm. you know, like that. Because you could be in a position where 
you're able to purchase a home or you're in a better financial position than you think you are and you just don't know it. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, um, like when, when I was in, like as an, as an E4, and I think another problem is, that this is reminding me, is the commands. Commands don't encourage you to purchase a home because they don't think you can either. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I think I was asking my, my staff sergeant or, or Gunny about, about purchasing a home and like, oh no, you gotta wait, save your money up. You probably hit it when you're, when your staff, like they, they make it seem like once you hit that staff, I don't know how it was in the Navy, but mm -hmm. a staff sergeant, you hit the staff rank. That's when you can get out there and actually make some money and invest. Anytime before that, you're just grinding, you're making your money, spend it on dumb shit like a PS4 <laughs> or a <laughs> crazy car that's at 20% interest, booze. <laughs> Tattoos, yeah. Mustangs, and you know. <laughs> I wish they would have taken a little bit more time to educate me on, on the potential investments that I could buy at such a young age. Like nobody takes the time, not nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, but a majority of people in the military don't take the time to, to educate you on what you can do as a young person in the military. Like nobody, not a lot of people take the time to put you aside and hey, here's what you're gonna do with your monthly income. Um, you know, save this much every month, go talk to a lender, go see what you can qualify for. Maybe look into, you know, renting your home out if you're deployed. Go look into um, renting your other rooms out to, to other military members that might not be able to afford a home right now. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little disappointing, but what are you gonna do? Um, that's I guess that's what we're here we're here for, right? We're here to tell you that there is there is a way to to do those things. Yeah, absolutely. So what what would you say to uh, like a new, let's say an E three who just got stationed out here in San Diego? Maybe they've been in for two three years. Mm -hmm just kind of getting their feet wet and have a little bit of a savings. Maybe they are established, but don't know what to do to make that next move. They want to buy a house or they want to buy some type of property. That way they can, you know, get their feet established in whatever town they're living in. Sure. What, what would you say to that person? So, um, just thinking back to me as an E3, I was dumb. I was uneducated, not dumb, but I was, I was very young and uneducated. So, I think getting out there and talking to the right people is the first step. Mm -hmm. um, maybe start with your chain of command. There's just something out there that will that will help you guide you to the right person. If not, we're here as a resource. Um, go educate yourself first and foremost. What do I need to do to purchase a home as a veteran? Yeah. Well, a great resource is the VA website. Yeah. That's actually the only resource you should be looking at if you're if you're thinking about using a VA loan. Research on how to use the VA loan if you're eligible. Uh, what your limits are as far as, you know, um, qualifying, and then go talk to a professional after that. The professional should sit down with you and go over the steps past all the way from, you know, getting your DD-214 if you're a veteran or getting your certificate of eligibility all the way to closing. Um, I think it's, it's just powerful how much information is on the internet, um, especially on the VA website, like I said, to empower you to get out there and, do, and take the next steps. Um, and then after, you know, talking to a professional, maybe look into some, some investment strategies. You were saying it earlier, um, the, what was it? The first class that you were talking about that bought a $300,000 condo. Yep. Your first home might not be perfect, right? Yep. It might not be your dream home, yep. but it's a stepping stone to get you to that dream home. You might start off with a, you know, two bedroom condo in, in Santee or, um, up in Oceanside if you're in on Camp Pendleton um, in downtown, mm -hmm. you know, put some sweat equity into it, uh, remodels a kitchen, remodel a bathroom, sell it, turn around and sell it a couple of years later for a premium, and then take that money that you made and use it as a down payment if you want. The cool thing about the VA loan is you do not have to use, you're, you don't have to put anything down, um, but you have those closing costs covered. And then in this market, as you know, you can get your closing costs completely covered. Yeah. With the right seller, you can pay damn near nothing. Like you, all you have to pay for is your inspection and appraisal, and then you're all set. That's it. Yeah. You can get into a home with little skin in the game, and you're talking about going from a three hundred thousand dollar condo. Would you say a million dollars now? Right. After definitely well over a million. Crazy. Yeah. That's insane. You know what you could do with a million dollars in San Diego? 
go get yourself a multifamily home. Yeah, literally. start your investment journey there. You can buy a pretty sweet two to four unit property here and live super comfortably and have a monthly payment of, you know, 500 bucks if you wanted to. If you if you made if you educated yourself first and foremost and then talk to a professional and then take action. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Imagine if you had a, even an E4, E5, they come in, uh, they sit down with you. This year, they buy their first multifamily. Or let's say even two uh, military guys that are roommates, mm -hmm. we're like, hey, we want to buy a place. Maybe we can't afford something together or alone right now. We're going to use our stuff together like you and your buddy did. Mm -hmm. You get a multifamily, uh, even something over in like IB or La Mesa, whatever, right? Yeah. These are popular towns, by the way. These <laughs> you know, are crazy popular towns. Yeah, like you, you would not expect to buy a house in the in exactly. These cities. And then you live in that for at least one year. Let's say a couple years. You find um, some good renters, maybe other military members that you know of, or yada yada. Yeah. It's super easy to get them in. They qualify obviously because they're in the military. They have that paycheck, and then uh, you kind of just keep building up over the the next twenty years. By the time that E4 would retire in 20, 25 years, you could have four, five, 10 plus multifamily units in San Diego, all uh, producing, uh, you know, passive income mm -hmm. every month. Imagine what that rent is going to be in 20 years. Rent's, rent's not going down you anytime know. soon. <laughs> if anything, it's, it's skyrocketing. Yeah. Some renters out there are paying, are paying a crazy amount for, for a two bedroom in San Diego. I think the average is like three grand for it's a two bedroom pretty, in San Diego. Yeah. It's, it's getting pretty up there. Gnarly. So that's another reason to kind of think about buying a home. If you're talking about a, a rental price that is equal or more than your mortgage, it's time to consider buying a home. Yeah. What are you doing? Especially if you're going to do 20 to 30 years in the military, mm -hmm. you're grinding so hard for 20 to 30 years. That is like one of the hardest things you can possibly do, right? Yeah, it's insane. But when you retire after 30 years of serving your country, don't you think you should be retired and not have to work anymore? I think so. Right? Yeah. So imagine if you had all these rental properties under your belt and your portfolio that bring you passive income every single month. Mm -hmm. And then you have your retirement and then you get your disability, you know, if you have any, and then you get your GI bill and you go to school, you can go to school and get your, you know, master's degree, use your, uh, whatever you want, vocational <laughs> rehab, if you got that and go to school for another 36 yep. months and just get paid the whole time. Like you can literally retire after your 20 years in the military and never work again and be very, very well off for the rest of your life. Your family be taken care of. Yeah but you can do it by investing in real estate. Just all, you, all you have to do is start. All yeah. you have to do is take action. Um, yeah, man, I made a video about how much money you are using the appreciation rate we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. how much money you would get in like two years. Uh, and I used an $800,000 home as an example. Yeah. Um, I use $800,000 because that's it, at the time it was pretty close to the average price in, in San Diego, which is a little, Yeah. <laughs> it hurts a little bit to say, but um, it's, I mean, we live in a pretty cool city. So. Yeah. I compared that to two years of renting a two bedroom condo in, in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, and in, th in two years you would make, um, and I referenced my video, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, around $300,000 in, in appreciation, using the average appreciation rate um, after closing costs. That's how much you would have to pay in, in rent at the time. Oh my gosh. $250,000, bro. So you're losing $250,000 over and that two years. That's gone. That's gone. going into someone else's pocket. Yep. If you have your own home, you know, you're the the principal and all that stuff that you're, you're not paying all that. Some of that's coming right back into your own bank account, which mm -hmm. is your home. It's a big savings plan. Yeah. You know, I, I like to think of it as a, you know, a hedge against inflation, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So it's always going to appreciate, especially in San Diego, you're going to get some of the best appreciation for, you know, real estate in the country. And then, you know, you always want to outpace inflation, stuff like that. Right. But if you're just paying rent, you're, you're doing that for someone else. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same thing. You're just paying it for them. Right. You're not saving your own money. So I think that's, that's another important thing to, to kind of think about when you are renting, right? is how much money are you willing to spend on someone else's mortgage over the next couple of years? 
I, I, I say know. zero. I don't want to pay. <laughs> I say <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, I'd rather save that for me, you know? Right. At least put that back into my assets, my uh, bank account, rather than mm -hmm. paying off someone else's mortgage. Yeah, you know? and I don't, I don't have kids or anything, but if you have kids, like, think about it. Think about how much college costs nowadays. You can you can buy a home. Let's say you you buy a home when your kid is born. You keep it for as long as you know from the time they're zero years old, like they're born, all the way to the time they're eighteen and they're going to college. Mm -hmm. You can use the appreciation from from the house that you bought them to pay off their their tuition and have way more than that in, yeah. in just supplemental income. You could also use that home and if they go to college in, a, in another town for instance so you could buy a home uh, for your kid that was newborn right your kid is born you buy a home and this is just an example keep that home until the time they go to college mm. use that money to pay their tuition and still have a ton of money as supplemental income yeah. and if it's possible and they go out of state let's go let's say they go up to san francisco you can use a strategy called 1031 exchange. Yep. Exchange your home for a home up there, and you know they live in it for free while they rent their the other rooms out to to their college buddies. Yep. Right now they're making money. Now they're learning how to invest in real estate. Um, and if you're in the military, you know that's just extra money for you. <laughs> you're already making money every month. That's just extra money coming into your account for you know trips that you might want to take uh, for. A college for your kids for you know that cool new mustang that you can afford as need to but <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i'm saying 100 percent. how would you tell like a, a person that has never bought a home how would you guide them to a to a lender like what would you what would you say the right steps are to find the right lender well i guess there's a couple different ways you can kind of go about it um personally i would say to align with your agent first Okay. So who, whoever you plan to work with or, you know, you want to work with. So whether that be someone you know personally that is in real estate, grew up, or somebody you met recently that, you know, provides a ton of value. And you're sure. like, I want to work with this person. Well, most, most agents, as you know, we work with lenders that we work with the best. And trust, so have, right? Yeah. You trust that person. Exactly. They know they're going to, they're going to close a deal without any problems. Mm -hmm. And hopefully. they provide the best service to your clients. Mm -hmm. if, it's all kind of like that, but I would say if you're shopping and you have a realtor, ask for their recommendations on lenders because, you know, it could be uh, a couple different lenders they work with in that city, like San Diego. I have several lenders that I work with very closely. Mm -hmm. Those are who I recommend to all my clients because I know that they can close. I know they have great service and you know they'll they'll do whatever they can to make sure that you're happy as right. a client right? and they have pretty great rates exactly. i'm going to say something pretty controversial but if you're out there looking at military home loans um veterans united even navy fed uh look at their rates compared to local lenders yeah um i i'm astonished on how they take advantage of veterans it's insane i <laughs> I was looking for a home. I got a quote from Veterans United that was a, a whole percent higher than a local lender. Really? Yeah, it's it's crazy. I don't know, understand why. It's because of the names, right? Yeah. You, as a veteran, you don't know any better, right? You're going to go towards your people, mm -hmm. right? So if you see the military home loans, it's like, okay, I'll go with these guys. Talk to more than one lender. Absolutely. Talk to more than one lender. Please don't stick with the first lender that you meet. Yep. Um, if I recommend you a lender and you don't jive with them, I'm not, my feelings aren't going to be hurt. Go talk to somebody that's going to take care of you. Absolutely. And just another thing is, you know, when, when your credit gets ran by a lender, you know, anytime your credit gets ran in the next 30 days, it's all going to be under the same thing. So it's not like mm -hmm. you're going to get hit 20 times because a bunch of lenders run your stuff in, right. in 30 days. Everything that happens in that 30 days is going to be the same hit. So you're not going to take these, uh, like at least for, for what, I used to think, you know, yeah. if, if I need to go get my credit ran at like a dealership. A car or, dealership, right? That's know, what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. it's going to be a negative impact on my credit history. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. You know, I've talked to several uh, mortgage professionals and that is a myth that if your credit gets ran more than once, you know, it's going to be more than one hit and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's not true. So if you want to shop lenders, shop those lenders within a 30 day period and then figure out which one's the best or what has the best rates. Yeah. 
the service, everything that works for you. So don't be scared. You can to talk to shopping. 30 lenders yeah. in 30 days. To if do you're shopping it. for a mortgage lender, don't be scared to let them run your credit and find out which one works best for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. You know? Also make sure you're, you're, you're dealing with somebody that's a good reviews. Like you want them to be a good lender and also you rock with them. Like you want them to be on your side. So mm -hmm. if you're, if you feel something weird about the lender, like go with your instinct. That's, yeah. uh, that's how I make 90% of my decisions. And some more bad decisions, but I still <laughs> go with my gut. Yeah. Uh, if you feel something weird, definitely move on. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So the veteran, they've talked to you, they've established a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. um, you've sent them to a lender and they're fully pre-approved. They're ready to start rolling. What's, what's the next steps? Cool. So the, the next step is obviously we've already done a buyer's consultation, right? Mm -hmm. So I've already met with the client, uh, sat down and figured out exactly what their goals are, what their needs are is super important. Actually, like I need to know what that black swan is. Like, why are you trying to move? Why do you want to buy? Who, what, where, when, and why? I need right. to know exactly what your motivation is. That's going to help me figure out where, you know, what is most important to you and what is kind of just a want rather mm -hmm. than a need. Uh, but once that happens, you know, we can kind of start looking at places on the, on the market that match what you're looking for. So you'll give me like a criteria. This is once you're pre-approved with your lender, you know, you know exactly what that price point is mm -hmm. at that price point. Now I need to know what your needs are. How many bedrooms do you need? What kind of space and stores do you need? Do you need a garage? Are you going to be parking? Do you need an EV charger because you, you drive a new Tesla or all these little things are going to help me try to, uh, determine what areas of areas are going to yeah. work best for you, you know? And then, um, yeah, just kind of start shopping and getting out there boots on the ground. Right. Literally that once you start everything, once you get to that point where you are ready, you have that pre-approval, you kind of know what you want and you mm -hmm. get out there and see some places in person. Right. And it, it usually takes, I would say, at least for me, my average probably around eight weeks to find a home, um, for them to move into. Uh, what would you say your average is? I, I think it, it all depends, right? Yeah, it depends on the, the veteran or, for sure. or the person that you're showing home to, but what would you say? I, I would say it definitely takes about, uh, at least four weeks, you know, mm -hmm. just, just depending on like your time frame. you know, I've had clients come up and they're like, Hey, I need to find a place in the next week or I'm going to be uh, homeless. Right. You know, that's a sp specific uh, situation, <laughs> but, um, you know, I I've had clients where I've showed them 200 places and you know, they picked something that had looked nothing like their search criteria. Yeah. And then I've had people go out and they love the first place we saw and we were writing offers. Oh. So it, it kind of just depends on the client and what their needs are, but be aggressive. Don't be scared to write offers and trust your agent's um, knowledge of the market. Yeah. It's important to, to trust your agent. I think building, building a relationship with your agent, um, uh, and this could be a controversial, maybe I know, you know, we, we met at a, a Mike Ferry con or concert, a Mike Ferry meetup, um, he's a very sales oriented uh, coach. Like he's get the, get the transaction. You're going to, you're going to call, get the transaction and sell the home. That's it. No relationship built. Uh, I'm a little different. I like, I like building the relationships and yeah. uh, keeping in touch. And, um, even before, during, after a transaction, I like making sure that everything's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in a home and, and nothing, it's not going okay. or you need a recommendation on a painter or, you might be you might need some help moving i want to be that guy i want to be your person to to be there for you yeah. right um because i'm the one who's been showing you the homes I, I i'm kind of responsible for getting you in there along with everybody on our team the lenders title yeah. everyone so i want to make sure that you're happy in the home uh, yeah. that you that you chose um yeah I, I agree like just being able to provide as much value as possible to your clients and that's why I actually, like, I have a whole list of vendors that I work with. Mm -hmm. That way, if any of my clients are like, hey, uh, you know, the shower just broke. I know we moved in six months ago, but blah, 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 whatever. Right. I already have a plumber that I know is good because it's super hard to find good contractors right. and, you know, plumbers, stuff like that. So I already have a pre-built vendor list of people that I know do good work mm -hmm. and are trustworthy. So I'm like, I have no problem being like, hey, you can give this person a call. They Tell them that I sent you and they're good to go. 
Yeah. They don't have to go on Google and start doing research and reading reviews and trying to find out which person can come out and do it. I already have, you know, the plug. I can put you in touch with anybody you need that's going to help you with your own. Yeah. You yeah. try to get a quote online, they yeah. <laughs> put your email in and wait 24 exactly. hours and maybe we'll get back to you. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. So we touched on um, like VA, VA appraisals earlier, just slightly. I want to dig into it a little bit. Um, have you had any experience with the, with bad appraisals at all? Mm -hmm. I've had uh, a Tidewater once. Okay. Yeah. Is it uh, as bad as, as they say it is or um, what, what's your experience with that? Um, it just depends, you know. Um, my experience wasn't too bad. I think it came in like a little bit less. Sure. It's like 10K. But um, what do you want to touch on exactly? I guess what were they what were they looking for? Like when when you got the appraisal, what were they actually looking for as far as um, like what do appraisers look for when they're when they're getting in the in the home? Yeah, so the appraisal, especially with the the VA home loan, is is it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a it can be a deal breaker, and uh, I think that's kind of why a lot of VA loans, you know, weren't as competitive sure. in that 2021 era especially in San Diego, because uh, the appraisal is what the value of the home actually is, right? So an appraiser gets ordered by the mortgage lender, they come out and then they assess the home based off what it looks like, upgrades, where it's at, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, all those things are, they go into effect to get the actual value, market value of the mm -hmm. home. So when that happens, let's say you're already in the con under contract at 600,000 right but the appraisal came in at 585 sure so now you're in contract fifteen thousand dollars higher than what the actual value of the home is mm -hmm. yeah. now if you're a va home loan you can't do that they're not going to let you you know do that unless you sign away your right right appraisal. yeah that's their so, protective veteran right that's their so yeah you, the va knows that you're not overpaying for a home that's mm -hmm. if it's valued at 585 they're not going to want you to get into a home that's valued less than what you're paying for that's exactly. not what they're there to do they're there to protect you um so at that point it's between you and the seller to figure out okay well, who's going to pay for this fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars right that's that's where we come in as as negotiators to figure out okay here's a veteran who is fully qualified and we came in let's say as a, for instance with very little we, we barely got the closing costs yeah all right let's work with a seller come on do you really want to charge another fifteen thousand dollars for someone who may be out of the running at that point um for a veteran that obviously needs a, a place to stay yeah um and most of the time you know agents could get come to a consensus and and agree upon a price that that works for both of them but you know it's at that point it's up to the agents to figure out right one last thing we could be done we've been here for a minute <laughs> yeah, yeah uh so i was at the the rolando street fair yesterday and uh we had a booth up and we were just you know advertising our, our business and uh, how we got people in we had a board it was um is uh is the market crashing yes or no yeah, we were, yeah, we were raffling yeah. off some some padres tickets um so <laughs> i'm gonna ask you what do you think is the market crashing <laughs> the real estate market if you do so something. no the okay. real estate market is not crashing at all okay. I, I think um people like to you know click on clickbait mm -hmm. type stuff on the internet they get their news from all kinds of uh sources that aren't even that credible yeah. <laughs> or maybe they are like some type of news media outlet that they do that on purpose. Right. They say, hey, the market is crashing. So people click on their links. Mm -hmm. um, but if you follow any, you know, really established industry leaders in real estate, they'll tell you that there's there's no like impending doom of a market crash. Yeah. You know, obviously that lender you spoke with the other day, she had a she hit the nail on the head. Right. Right. So there, there's just too many uh, variables at play here that won't allow for a real estate crash like we saw in 2008 right you know that was a very i think we've learned our lesson yeah it was we've like a one-off situation because of a specific thing that happened mm -hmm. it's not just like the entire state of the market crashed home prices are still going up <laughs> like people are people's homes are still appreciating 
Rates just dropped recently. Yep, we're still getting multiple offers on homes. I'm yep. talking to realtors and there's still activity. There's still mm -hmm. buyers. It, it's just the, the purpose of interest rates going up is to stabilize the market. You can't get more inventory if everybody's buying all the homes up. So yep. if it's more expensive to buy homes, less people will buy homes and inventory will go up. We haven't seen that just yet, but I feel like it's coming. Um, I was reading an article from the from the NAR economist, NAR economist, and his prediction is home sales might go down a little bit, which with higher interest rates is, I mean, it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And home prices are gonna stay stable. Nowhere on any anything that I've read so far, other than you know the clickbait stuff, is saying that we're gonna get a, a market crash that's gonna bring us back to 2008. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I agree. I've been Danny Delarosa I'm with Karen Realty Group, and I help buyers and sellers buy dreams, sell dreams. <laughs> cool. Thanks for having me, Danny. I'm Rusty Iverson. I'm with the Finest City Real Estate team here in San Diego. And uh, thanks for having me today, man. All right. Cool, bro. <laughs>